Hello, welcome. So I wanted to share with you the story of fire, of my recent full moon fire. It was only a few weeks ago, but it seems a, a different lifetime. It was before social distancing, it was before everything that has occurred, occurred. So I'm here in Jersey and we're meeting down at the beach to do the full moon fire at high tide. On a corner of the beach that no matter high, how high the tide comes is always clear and, and available for our fire pit. So we meet down at the beach, down at the car park where we meet. And the wind is howling and the tide is high. It's higher than I've ever seen it. It's so high it's come up the slipway and it makes it impossible for us to put our fire where we always put it. Even though we tried and the sea came and soaked us. So not to be deterred, we decided we'd take the fire onto the dunes, onto the sand dunes that, that line the sea at this place. And somebody knew a sheltered spot because it was howling with wind and rain. The tide was high, the moon was full, even though we couldn't see her. We found a spot and began to make preparation for building the fire together as a group. And what happened then was chaos. We are a group of people that have often come to fire together. It seemed that we couldn't get the, the wood of the fire to stand. It kept falling over. Eventually we managed to get the fire in a in a place where we could light it. At the very last moment, somebody remembered we needed a patch of mama stick. We were huddled in various groups. And then there came a moment where, as firekeeper, I asked the group to step into circle, as we do. And yet nobody stepped into circle. People huddled very close to the fire pit. We couldn't seem to find a circle. And I walked around the fire pit itself to try and encourage the space of that. Eventually some kind of circle seemed to form and we began to light the fire. It only took a little persuasion, even though everything was wet, for the fire to light. And we stood back in this strange circle that wasn't really a circle and began to sing and to rattle and as we sang the song was discordant and we were all out of rhythm with each other and as the fire keeper I was wondering what to do about that I tried various different things of holding stillness, of moving around the group to again move them out as they clustered around the fire so that it wouldn't be possible for somebody to come to fire with their stick to make their honouring, to make their gift. So eventually we all managed to do, to blow into our sticks and to come to fire and to place what we were let of go, letting go of onto the fire itself. With lots of movement around the circle that, that again became a not circle. And once that was over, I began to stop the seeing so that we could being the patch of mama stick to fire, to make to let it become the children's fire. And it was only at that point that I realised that actually we hadn't sent the patch of mama stick around the circle, or the non-circle. So in that moment, out of the chaos that had been until that moment of us making this fire and honouring this fire and placing our sticks on this fire, I became more present, deeply present. And in 
that moment I just said, pass the stick around silently and each of us blow our wishes for the children, for the future. So silently with the fire beautifully, beautifully burning at the, in the base of the bowl and shifting round the bowl itself. A sweet fire, uh, a fire that you can put your hand in and not be burnt from. The Pachamama stick went from each person to the next person in silence as we all watched each other slowly, silently blow our wishes for the children. I've never been present at a fire where there has been complete silence and complete presence from everybody present as each person blew their wishes in for the future, for the children. It felt to me an extraordinary moment, something new. At previous fires I have noticed the fire almost going out when we have placed the Pachamama stick on it. And that many times we have had to come to blow, to reignite the fire. This past year I've noticed that. And then two of the group came to fire and placed the Pachamama stick on the fire. Which was taken and engulfed and sweetly burnt quickly. And all this time the embers of the fire had been flowing out of the bowl as it just came very low in the bowl and, and, and flew out and they began to make a, a pathway on the sand dunes and each and every one of them flew to the north so there was like a golden pathway to the north to the place of possibility and by the time we closed directions there was very little of the fire left in the bowl it had all this golden flex to the north, to Serikinti, to the place of possibility. So in this wild, chaotic, wet, high tide, full moon, I learnt the value of presence. I learnt the value of silence. I learnt the value of a community coming together with one purpose, with one intention, and simply with their breath and with their love, sending that intention out to the world. So enjoy your fires however you have them. It may be at the moment you cannot, cannot have fires with others. Or maybe that you are indoors and your fire is different to how you've known it to be. I would say embrace that difference. Notice. Notice no matter how chaotic it gets, the moment. The moment when you are called to stillness. So that you can dream what needs to be dreamed. For the future. For the children. For all of us.